Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to talk about a specific type of math talk or number talk that I love using in K-2 through classrooms. This type of number talk is called number strings. Now I have shared all sorts of videos on incorporating math talk in the classroom. I have this video right here as well as I share a bunch of different math talk examples in this video right here which are great for K-2 through students. So I will link those down in the description but in today's video I want to talk about a specific type of math talk and how beneficial it is to use when teaching students specifically computation strategies. So if you're ready to learn about number strings, what they are, how to use them, as well as some examples, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. followed my channel for a while, you will know that I love using math talks in the classroom. Sometimes they are called number talks. I like to specifically call mine a math talk because we don't always focus on numbers and number strategies. Sometimes we'll focus on measurement or geometry and all sorts of math skills. So our math talk is essentially just a time that we use at the beginning of our math block to really dive into and discuss different math concepts. In K-2, I like to keep these math talks pretty short. I actually Actually try to stick to about five minutes per day that way I can use them consistently and I have a ton of slides that are ready made in this product right here I had made these over the last year to just kind of gather up all the different types of math talks I love doing in the classroom so here students can work on subitizing they can work on comparing numbers they can discuss which number or object doesn't belong and why they can play fill the grid where they figure out different ways to make a number we focus on the strategy making tens, decomposition, I have picture prompts, place value slides to focus on, I have math talks for the adding up strategy as well as specific measurement ones, and a what's the rule math talk bundle where students will look at concept attainment and they have to decide what the rule is and why it isn't applied on the thumbs down side. So as you can see, I've compiled a bunch of those in a big bundle. I also sell each of the different strategies and skills that you can work on separately for like $2 each. So if you just want some number talks for the adding up strategy, for example, with subtraction, then you could just get the adding up strategy. Or if you just want the subitizing number talks, you could also grab those as well. So you can see that you can have a math talk really around any math skill that you want to deepen your students' conceptual knowledge around. So all that being said, what is a number string? Now a number string is a type of math talk that I've seen numerous times before. I believe Sherry Parrish has an entire book with number strings. She calls them number talks, but technically they are number strings. So a number string is when you have a set of related problems and students go through the problems, usually one at a time, and they try to identify the relationship relationship between the problems and they're kind of set up in a specific way with a helper problem or like a base problem and then it goes into something that would illustrate the strategy you're working with and then students go back to the base problem and then use the problem to work on the strategy. Now, that sounds pretty abstract. Don't worry, I'm going to show you plenty of examples so you know how to do this. Now, just to point out before I do go into a few examples so you can see what number strings really are and how they work with your students, I do wanna emphasize that this is a type of math talk. So a lot of the math talk norms you'll have with your students are going to remain the same. This means you'll want to try to keep these student led. So you are showing them problems on the board and you're kind of guiding them towards an answer, but you are not explicitly teaching them the answer just yet, right? We still want them to talk around the ideas. We want to write down and record the ideas. But a few things are different about a number string. First, it's going to be a little bit longer than my typical math talks. I know plenty of other people have math talks where they talk 15, 20 minutes during the math block time. Um, in K through two, I find it hard to hold their attention for that long. And I find that if we just do it every single day for about five minutes, we still get, you know, really great students that are able to talk about math. But since number strings are set up as not one particular problem that you're talking all about and discussing all the different ways you can solve this one problem and how we know the answers, instead, again, it's set up as a set of problems. Maybe there's four problems, maybe there's five, maybe there's six. Um, and you wanna talk about the relationship between them, we don't instead go super deep on one, we go deep on all of the problems together. So these would take about 10 minutes to go through. 
All that being said, let me just dive into an example of a number string. Now, number strings are great to use when you're trying to illustrate a strategy that might be a little abstract for students. For example, in first grade, if you are teaching students the doubles plus one strategy, you can easily tell your students, okay, three plus three we know is six, right? They've memorized that. So three plus four must equal one more seven. You can tell them this, but hearing all those numbers over and over again is pretty abstract. We want to show them visuals and we want to show them helper problems to help them understand this concept. So let me show you. This is exactly how I would start off a number string with my students. Now, since I'm teaching doubles plus one, at this point, I would obviously expect my students to know their doubles facts. So I would simply show them here, three plus three is what? And we have a visual here, we have the three and the three in five frames, and they would tell me it is six. Now I could ask them a little bit more, I'd ask them how did you know, do we agree, do we disagree, okay. But again, we are not spending the entire, you know, five minutes on this one slide, we're spending 10 minutes going over 10 slides. Then I would go to this slide, okay, three plus four. So I would again ask my students how they solved it, and if nobody points out that we already knew three plus three, I could go back to the other slide and ask my students what do I notice about these two problems here. We have three plus three and three plus four. Look at the visuals. I might get up there and I might even circle the top three and circle three on the bottom and notice how it's the three, the three plus the one equals seven. I could record that as three plus three plus one equals seven, and then I could also shorten that into six plus one equals seven because we already know that doubles fact of three plus three. So you can see that this slide is the one we're gonna spend a little bit longer on since we are going into depth about this doubles plus one strategy. Then I show the next slide, five plus five. Now notice I didn't go into another doubles plus one yet. This is in your number string. You wanna make sure that you have these base problems or these helper problems to get students to go back to what they know and then we will make it a little more difficult. So we already know this, five plus five is a doubles fact. What is it everybody? 10. Okay, well as five plus five equals 10, what is five plus six? Take a look at this one. Again, after we've gone through the three plus four, they might say, okay, well wait, we already know five plus five equals 10. And again, on the board, I can circle those fives right away, plus one more equals 11. For this type of skill, I would continue using visuals a few more times, and then my last couple slides will always be more abstract when my students are ready for it. If we get to an abstract slide like this one where I just have a bunch of equations and my students are floundering or they really don't get it yet, we take a step back. We practice more with visuals. But we do like to get to this abstract portion. Four plus four, what does it equal everyone? Eight. So if four plus four equals eight, then four plus five must equal nine. Back to a helper problem, six plus six, what does that equal? 12, then six plus seven must equal 13. Back to our helper problem, eight plus eight, what does that equal? Eight plus nine. So you can see here how this type of number string would work. And then lastly, I do like to include one more of these. Here I have two helper problems with the five plus five and the seven plus seven, but my last two, I don't have a helper problem. I just see if they can try to solve it with the doubles plus one strategy without going back to the helper. So those six slides that I just went over with you are part of a 10 slide number string math talk that I would have with my students. Now for time purposes, I took out four more slides that just had the visuals like the three plus three and then the next one's three plus four. Um, you know, there was four plus four and then the next one's four plus five because I figured, you know, you get it at that point. That was a first grade example where I want my students to really visualize and understand and practice that doubles plus one strategy uh, without it being so abstract at first. We do, of course, move there, so that's why we have our number talk with visuals first, and then we try to get to that abstract point, but along the way, students are able to break apart those numbers, they're able to see how they relate to the actual doubles before practicing it themselves. So there you have the outline of a number string, right? How we want to go ahead and set them up to help our students discover these new strategies. And now that you understand the setup, let me show you a few more examples of ways you can use number strings. I also love to use number strings in kindergarten and first grade when we are trying to teach them to anchor a number. I want my students to anchor the number five, for example, in this example. So I will have a five up at the top and I'll ask students just to tell me what number do they see, how do they know, etc. And then they'll say, oh, we have five dots, it fills in, you know, half the 10 frame, that's the number five. 
And then once we get there, I'll say, okay, now look at the bottom number. What number is that? And they'll know that it is six, and I'll ask, how did you know? Now, I thought about kindergartners while I was doing this slide, so here I also have a glowing oval over the bottom five. So, of course, they can tell me that, you know, they counted up each dot individually. Um, but I'm trying to guide them towards the fact that six is just five and one more. Then we go to the next slide. I'll ask my students again, what number do we see up at the top? Five. And what number do we see at the bottom? Seven. How did you know? After going through the first slide, hopefully we'll quickly get to seven is five and two more. On the third slide, we continue with five and eight, but here I took away that scaffold. I took away the glowing oval to show that, you know, eight is five plus three more. The next slide is the number nine, and the last slide is the number 10. So once we've gone through those relatively quickly, remember this is all in one math talk, then I will show my students this slide right here. Hmm, what number is shown between both of these 10 frames? And I want my students to recognize that four plus the one more equals five. And I want them to visualize the fact that they can take this little dot from the bottom and they can move it up in their head to know that that five there, when we have half of a 10 frame completed, it's five. So as you can see, some of the previous slides would probably go a little quicker and then we get to something new and we're like, hmm, how can we think about this? Again, this is a math talk. Then we go to the next slide. Well, if the last one was four and one equals five, what's four and two? Again, I want them to visualize they can take one of those circles, complete the five frame up there, and then they have five and one more is six. And then similar again is four and three, and then we go into our abstract portion. We have five plus zero, five. What's five and one more? Six. What's five and two more? Seven. And what I'd be looking for when students are solving this is for them to count on from five. I don't want them using individual manipulatives just yet because again, we're working on five being that anchor number. I also created a very similar number string of 10 slides to do that same thing, but instead of anchoring the number five, we are anchoring the number 10, specifically thinking of those teen numbers. So it's set up in a very similar way. Now I wanna zoom through one more strategy just to show you another example of these number strings. And this one's going to be for making tens as an addition strategy. So again, we have 10 slides here and it always starts with the visual. So we have three plus seven, what does that equal everybody? 10. Remember, of course, these base or helper problems are going to be ones that my students already know. So by this point, if I am teaching them to make 10 in a larger, you know, addition problem, I want them to know those friendly pairs of 10. And I also like the visual here so we can have students picture that we're taking those three dots and completing the 10 frame. So three plus seven. Then we go to the next slide. Okay, well, if three plus seven was 10, what is three plus eight? And here we can see that it's 10 plus one more. Again, I want them to visualize completing that 10 frame by bringing two dots down and leaving one up. Then we go back to a helper problem, two plus eight. We know that quickly makes 10. So if two plus eight is 10, then two plus nine must be 11. I'd probably do one more example like this, four plus six equals 10, and then four plus seven must be one more, so it's 11. And then I would go to something a little trickier. We'd go back to a base problem, four plus six, students might even say, hey, we just did that one. So we know four plus six is 10, but now instead of four plus seven, what's four plus eight? And here I'm having students fill in two of the dots there, and then they have two left over, so four plus eight is 12. So they're still making 10, but instead of having one left over like they've been doing previously, they now have a few more left over. And then for some more abstract examples, when we have just our number sentences, just a reminder to always have those helper or base problems in there. So four plus six is 10, which means four plus seven is 11. Go back to a helper, so on and so forth. I hope that allowed you to see that you can really use number strings or a set of related types of problems to teach many different addition and subtraction strategies that your students need to learn. And by adding those visuals in there, it really helps students conceptualize the idea instead of just seeing it in abstract ways. Now, the slides that I've been showing are ones that I actually already created, and I'm adding it to that bundle that I shared at the beginning with all the different types of math talks. So this one, of course, is going to be called number strings, and for each 
each skill that we will work on, you will click on it and it will give you 10 slides. Now in all of the math talks, there's always an editable slide if you want to add more or create your own of the same types of problems. And that will be true here as well. So I will give you some slides that match those, that match the ones that your students have been working on. And if they need more practice, you can continue to create your own. Some of the strategies that will be included in this number strings unit include creating anchors of five and 10, making tens, decomposing into friendly numbers, teaching doubles plus one strategy, adding multiples of 10, and many more. Pretty much as I am brainstorming different strategies that I wanna teach my students, especially going towards first and second grade, there's many more strategies they learn. Um, I then try to compile 10 slides to make a number string for students to work on. Just like usual, that product that I mentioned in this video will be linked down in the description below for you to check out. All right, now I would love to know from you, do you use number strings in your classroom? Have you used them in the past? Do you just use number talks? Have you used both? Let me know. Also, if there's other strategies you would develop a number string around, drop them down in the comments so we can all read them and collect ideas for our own classrooms. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of all my new videos, which right now I am doing videos on Thursdays and Sundays. See you in the next one. Bye.